Tom Foreman joins us now from the virtual studio. Tom, how does this Buk missile system work? Could it hit a plane traveling 30,000 feet in the air, 500 miles an hour? Well, let's bring in the map and talk about the lay of the land here because that's part of the answer to your question. Talk about a plane that took off from Amsterdam, was headed over to Kuala Lumpur. If we zoom in a little bit and you actually watch the track of it, you can see that it passes right over the Ukraine space. And at the moment that this happened, all indications are this plane was about 32,000 feet in the air. Is that in the range of some surface-to-air missiles. Yes, it absolutely is. Not the lower-level ones. There's some that cannot reach this, but some that can. It was about 30 miles from the Russian border. We're not saying it came from Russia, but we're saying that this is what you should know about the lay of the land. So if someone wanted to strike this plane from Russia or from here in the areas where the pro-Russian separatists are or from over in Ukraine, could they do it? Yes, they could with one of these systems. The Buk anti-missile system that we're showing here is about half the size that it is in real life. And this is a state-of-the-art system operated by four people. It comes with four ready-to-launch missiles. As you can see, it is highly mobile. It can move around. From the time it's rolling, it can stop and fire in five minutes, acquiring a target and shooting in just 22 seconds. Here's a little bit about those missiles up on top there. Each one of them is actually about 16 feet long. Each one weighs about 1,500 pounds, carries a warhead of 154 pounds of high explosive, doesn't have to hit the target, simply has to get close, but these are all guided throughout their flight to get very close and do tremendous damage. And look at this last number, the speed, 2,684 miles per hour, top speed for these missiles. That makes them supersonic. That is somewhere around more than three times the speed of sound. And by comparison, a passenger jet like this would be traveling 500, 600 miles an hour. What that means is even if you fired one of these from 30 miles away, in about 40 seconds, it would be on that plane so fast that people on board, including the crew, likely could never see it coming before they were hit. We don't know where they were fired from, fired from if in fact it was fired on Jake, but that's the capability of the Buk system, and that's one of the reasons people are looking at it so closely, Jake. And Tom, just to be clear, we have no idea who fired uh, this rocket, but U.S. officials now say uh, that it was a rocket that, that or a missile that brought uh, the plane down. Could it have come from, is there, is there any way right now to ascertain uh, where, whether it's more likely that it came from Ukraine, came from pro-Russian space in Ukraine, the, the territory taken over by militias, or it came from Russia? Is it, it possible that it came from any of it? It is physically possible that it could have come from any of them because this type of missile, you're talking about a really robust missile system. In some ways, the idea is that it's in the hand of separatists or sort of rebel groups out there is probably one of the most alarming things because this is really state-of-the-art, big-time military hardware. Yeah, the Russians have it. We know that they have had troops along the border here for quite a number of weeks, and they've built them back up. Certainly, they would be capable of doing it. If they had the right people commanding such a thing in this disputed region here, they could do it. But it's also worth noting, Jake, that central to the Russian missile program for many, many years have been many technicians and facilities in Ukraine. 